Hey guys, what's going on? This video, I'm making it kind of a popular demand. A lot of people are having trouble. I'm getting a lot of questions and things like that. So um, it will be time relevant. So you know, we are going to pay attention to what the actual date is. It's 8-6-2015. Uh, uh, over time, this might become an irrelevant and pointless video. But right now, I'm going to take you through the steps of installing LSPDFR, installing callouts, installing additional scripts on top of that, all in relation to the plugin for um, Ragehook plugin. I'm not going to be doing the .NET. I'm not going to be doing the C++. Um, I might do different videos down the road in terms of using OpenIV and how to appropriately set up that and use a mods folder. I personally don't, but it's something that's really, really awesome. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. You can see right here I have LSPDFR 0.2 Bravo. Now the first thing I need to stress to you guys is that when you are using a mod, you need to read the mod and be very specific to make sure you're using the correct version of Ragehook and the correct version of LSPDFR if you're going to be using these mods. Any minor deviation can result in it not working appropriately. Every time LSPDFR updates, mods often have to update to reflect that. So, you know, if you're having a crash, and we'll get to that and how to get trouble supported for that, but if you're having a crash, the very first thing you need to go do is double check, make sure you have everything appropriately installed, because I've heard so many times I'm running the most recent everything, and then I look at the log, and they're actually not. They're running something that was two or three weeks old. But to install Ragehook and LSPDFR, because it's included with uh, LSPDFR, when you download it, you just highlight everything and it goes into the main directory. The main directory being where you find these two EXEs, that's considered your main directory for Grand Theft Auto 5. And you'll just drag and drop them. I'm not doing it because it's literally the same version I have. I'm not going to overwrite stuff. Um, you know, just do and install that and you'll be all set to go. Now, we're going to cover installing some other stuff. Um, for example, maybe you want to install Police Radio. Well, Police Radio, if you read the README, it tells you exactly where it belongs and it's pretty straightforward um you know this is right here it goes in the grand theft auto 5 plugins lspdfr folder and you can see that we're here plugins lspdfr folder and you can see police radio is appropriately installed we'll go for let's talk about callouts so maybe i want to do a call out most call outs go in here and stealth he, he bounces back and forth from different codes so you know if you go in there and you see the readme it's, it's kind of the same thing. He tells you which goes to which direction in its appropriate location. Now, you can see that he's got his own main directory because he has audio. Um, you know, he's got into his plugins folder, into the LSPDFR folder. You can see that he's got where the callouts folders actually go. That's these two files right here. So, you know, when you're installing his, if you read the entire readme, you'll see that he says drag and drop from the main directory. So, you want to go back to the main directory. And then you just highlight everything and I have his installed as well so I'm not going to do it but don't drop it into a folder like this don't make that mistake drop it over here and just make sure you override anything that you need to so that's the method for installing callouts that are run by LSPDFR and let's see what else we got um, I already talked about police radio that's pretty straightforward now here's a, a standard plugin independent of LSPDFR well for the most part some of them are and with those files it's, it's the same deal, don't drag and drop them into a folder, drag and drop them into a blank space and you can see they're already in there and it overwrites that. But what I'm going to do so I can show you what it's going to look like the first time you fire up, I'm actually going to delete those, I'm going to come back in here and install a fresh version of it. So what's the best method to launch the game? The best method right now is to right click this exe. Sometimes shortcuts for some people mess up. You need to run this program as administrator. It's doing a lot of stuff in the background and it needs to have the appropriate permissions to run. So when you click this, you'll see that you get your normal kind of prompt startup. And from here, remember how I just got rid of vehicle search? You should see a lot more things listed if you installed a lot of mods, which I don't recommend. I recommend just installing LSPDFR and running that. But you can go ahead and approve that by saying yes, and then it'll fire up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll say yeah, the game's going to start up and all that nonsense. And we'll kind of go through basic usage of the rage hook and making sure that the rage hooks were you know, working appropriately before anything else happens. And while we're waiting for that to start up, I want to cover two other extremely important files. So you have your startup.rphs. Well, what does that do? This tells everything how to go about starting up. So you can see here the developer mode enabled is just it gives you more flexibility within Ragehook. 
um, you know, threshold falls for, you know, um, 10,000 seconds, or 10,000, for 10 seconds because it's in milliseconds. And I tell it to load LSPDFR, you know, automatically. Um, that's pretty much the bread and butter for that, but you can add other things. Like, you can, you can go in here and you could add all of these plugins that are in here. Um, by name, you know, traffic uh, control DLL, vehicle search DLL, and it'll load them up automatically. I don't do it because I frequently go into code and I don't want them in there. And you know, it's it's kind of it, it just wastes time. So I load them up manually when I go to play a game, uh, when I go to record a patrol. But here's here's the bread and butter of getting, you know, um, assistance when you do have a problem. We'll come back to that. Um, we're just going to load in briefly now, and I'm going to cut till we're in, and I'll go about basic usage. Okay guys, so now that we're in here, well, what is Rage Hook? What does it actually do? Like I said, it's the driving force behind LSPFR or any Rage Hook plugin. Um, if you have a, a trainer that interferes with it, or you're unable to change the keys, natively it comes set to F4. And you can see when you press F4, you've got a log from here everything that's kind of happening and running and you can see the LSPDFR startup natively because of that startup folder um, you can do all types of things um, you can unload all plugins and you can see it says press tab to insert the suggestion which means it auto completes it for you and you know you could go about pretty much unloading individual plugins if you would like it says LSPDFR is the only one running you know so I, c I can just unload LSPDFR if I wanted um, if something crashes on you, you can do reload. You could, you know, you could reload all plugins and hit everything up. That's why I don't use the startup because I can do that using that method. Or you could tab over and, um, you know, not reload. I made a mistake. There we go. Or you could load plugins. And now you see that I've tabbed and auto completed that. I can literally press the up and down arrows to go about selecting anything. So I could push this and reload LSPDFR, and then. Boom. We're back on duty. Well, kind of. You have to press the spacebar in F9. But now we're on duty using LSPDFR. So, you know, that's pretty much... You can do simple things such as heal. You can repair. Repairs your vehicle that you're inside. And, you know, you can do all other types of... I mean, the commands are endless. Like, you can even press help to get more things. The, the rage hook is really powerful and really flexible. However, if you get into this game and you do... If you press that form, the game just pauses and you do not see rage hook... Um, sometimes it doesn't work on extremely low resolutions and sometimes it just doesn't support your setup. If it's not displaying for you, I personally cannot help you. Rage Hook is very large in size and scope and I can't troubleshoot that with you because it doesn't generate an error and you need to go to the Rage Hook website to get assistance for that. Don't, even, don't go on the LSPDFR for assistance, go to the Rage Hook website for that. So now that we got into the game, we determined Rage Hook works appropriately. And you know we're running scripts and we're having a great time. We're seeing rainbows and all that stuff. Um, when something crashes and turns your day sour, we'll go back to talking about that. Let's see, let's go right here or not? Or not? So let's go over a crash. When you do get a crash and it's script related from Rage Hook, um, your Rage Hook plugin dot log documents all of that. So everything that's just happened, you know, you can 100% peg on. Um, the log still like you can see this one's somewhat behind. I'm gonna hopefully try to find a crash in mine. Most of the time, no. Let's see. Hopefully, I can get one. There we go. And you know, this unhandled tells me right away what's going on. Um, now you need to paste the entirety of your log. Now I'm not saying all the way from up here to all the way down to here, but the entirety of that session. So right here, something crashed. For vehicle search, vehicle search was having an issue. <laughs> I don't get to use you as an example. <laughs> anyway, vehicle search, right now it's telling me that the script name vehicle search had a crash, and it was just because Rage Hook Exception was an invalid handle. Like, the, the vehicle that it was looking for was invalid. It's not important that you guys know what this is, but I'll tell you what is important is that you start from up here and you go down here to the point of where the crash took place, which I lost track of. Right here. Now this is, it's very important that you guys go down to here because what people need to know when they're going to help you is, is this guy running the right version of Rage Hook, you know? And also they're also going to need to know, is this guy running the correct version of LSPDFR? You know what I mean? So once we get it figured out from that point, and don't worry, this is an old log, um, uh, you know, this is from 722 2015 
So this is when we were using that, but it'll say what version you were using. Don't edit this or change this or play any games or nothing like that. But you can see that we need all of that information all the way down to cover that single encounter. And you can do it in whatever method you want. Um, you know, sometimes pace spin works out really well where you can, you know, literally just grab that thing, go to pacebin.com and paste it in there and just you can send a direct link. And you know, from there you stand a lot better chance of getting help from me if it's my fault. Like sometimes you guys come to me with scripts that I didn't even make asking me for help. I don't understand that. But you know, if you send me a log, if you send me a brief description of the circumstances leading up to it, hey, I was on foot, I was trying to do a plate check, it crashed, this was the vehicle I was trying to plate check, here's the log from when I started up LSPDFR, or Ragehook itself, to the, you know, what led up to the crash, you stand a really good chance of me either, one, correcting that error and sending you an updated version, or two, troubleshooting it with you to help you and figure out what the issue is. But generally, a lot of you are getting ignored lately, and it's because you don't include a full log or an appropriate explanation of the problem at hand. So, in essence, Rage Hook comes with it. You know, you're going to want to launch it as an administrator, give it the appropriate administrative levels. Uh, you're just going to drag and drop the appropriate thing. You, you have to read, guys. You just bottom line, bottom line of what it comes down to. You have to read. Like if you go in here to the vehicle search. You know, you can see he's got all this chain. Oh, he doesn't. This is a horrible example on my part because he does not have. <laughs> he does not have the proper readme. We'll go to my readme. But if you go into the readmes, you can see. You know, I got it broken down. An install process, and I repeat these lines because somehow people still miss it. Like it's not. This isn't even a joke. This was not meant to be funny. But you know, in here, it just it's pretty straightforward, and you have to pay attention to this stuff, guys and you have to pay attention to the required versions and if you stay within those constraints and realize that you know you have to keep things extremely up to date you have to install things correctly and you just you have to make sure the rage hook is working properly before you even seek help you might need to see somebody for help before you see me for help if, you, if things are going that bad for you but if you stay within those constraints and you you get somewhat professional and looking for effort and putting effort into seeking help then you'll get effort in s for you know getting help back if you're typing one or two lines you know what shit crashed and i don't know why and i'm just running this i'm running everything recent bruh um i'm not gonna probably not gonna stop to assist you i'm probably just gonna let the let the message box drag you down to the bottomless pit I hope you guys like this. I will be trying to do, um, you know, next video when I get to sit down. I'm not saying the next video I release, but when I get to sit down for another small tutorial video, I will be covering OpenIV, how to do the mod folder to protect your mods for when everything updates, and also probably talking a little bit about um, Alexander Blade's C++ script hook because I love his trainer. I highly recommend using it. It's what we use through L LCPDFR and Grand Theft Auto 4, and it's just a fantastic trainer. And, you know, if you guys like this and want more of this kind of stuff, you know, just show a little love, smack that like button, you know, gives me a little rub on the back, you know, a little pat on the back, let me know I'm doing the right thing. And, you know, look forward to bringing y'all more LSPDFR, excited for LA Noor. I got a sleeper program that's really low on the radar that I'm excited to bring to y'all so you guys can hear me yell and do things wrong. And I'll just catch y'all at the next one.